in navigating through the blessed life of the master of the ladies of the universe, Lady Fatima to Zahra, the beloved daughter of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Were we going to learn about her life, her contribution, her sacrifice, and her legacy? So please, let's meet every night throughout the holy month of Ramadan and learn from the beautiful life of Lady Fatima Alayhi Salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. My brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We come now to another chapter of Fatima's life, and that is the chapter of Fadak, the land of Fadak. What is the story of Fadak? Let me brief you within a few minutes. Fadak is a land or a farm that is north of Medina, which used to belong to the Jewish community there. And then the Jewish community agreed with the Prophet. They made a covenant that they give it to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this is whenever a land goes to the Prophet with no fighting, within peaceful means, with no fighting, then it becomes, God says in the book, it becomes the property of the Prophet. And this is what we read in the Quran. This is what we read. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah al-Hashr. Hashr is chapter 59, verse number 6. مَا وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ What God has restored or gifted Afa from faith, gifted the Prophet, minhum from them, fama awjaftum alayhim in khaylin wala rikab. You didn't spur for it with horses or camels. It means you got it with no fighting, through peaceful means. Walakin Allah yusallitu rusulahu ala man yasha. But God gives his apostles, gives them power of control or power over this land. So this land was taken by the Prophet through peaceful means. And then God sent another message to the Prophet in the Holy Quran in Surah Ar-Rum, chapter 30, verse 38. فَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهُ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Exegist, historians, Mufassirin, scholars, unanimously agree that when this verse came, فَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهِ Give to your relative its own share. The Prophet, peace be upon him, came to Fatima alayhi salam and he said to her, I am gifting you during my lifetime, I'm gifting you this land of Fadak. It is yours. When Fatima alayhi salam asked her father, Father, why are you giving me this land? He said, because your mother Khadija has given me her entire wealth at a time where I was most in need and nobody was willing to give me and help me. Khadija comes alayhi salam and puts her wealth at my disposal. She donated her entire money to serve my cause, which is the cause of Islam. So today in return to the goodness of Khadija, I want to, to give the daughter of Khadija, Fatima alayhi salam, which is my daughter, beloved daughter, something in return. So the, the land of Fadak is yours. Also part of Khaybar, not only the land of Fadak, the Khums of Khaybar. So the Prophet gave it to her. 
And at that time when the Prophet was in the house of Fatima, he wanted to have witnesses. So he called Ali to come, write a piece of paper that the land of Fadak belongs. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift for Fatima alayhi salam. And then there was a servant also of the Prophet and Um Ayman, another lady who used to serve the Prophet. Three witnesses beside Fatima alayhi salam. And beside her father, the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only 10 days after controlling the Khilafah after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr sent his soldiers to expel the agents of Fatima alayhi salam from the land of Fadak north of Medina. They were expelled. The news reaches Fatima alayhi salam that her land being appropriated by the political establishment. Fatima was a furious. Ten days ago, her father has just died. The Khilafah was hijacked. The Khilafah diverted. Muslims veered off, not all of them, many of them, from the main course. They deflected and that is mentioned in the Quran. This is a fact in Surah Al Imran, verse 144. Muhammadun illa rasulun qad min min Do you go back on your heels after he dies? Because someone in the Battle of Uhud said, Laqad qutila Muhammad. That's it, Muhammad is dead. Let's go back to Jahiliyyah. No more Islam. Islam closed down. No more Islam. God sends Jibreel with this message. Now suppose Muhammad is dead. Does that mean Islam is dead too? Islam comes to an end with the death of the Prophet? Religions do not come to an end with the death of their leaders and their prophets and their messengers. Muhammad is a messenger just like other messengers. He comes and he goes, but Islam remains. We are all the soldiers of Islam. Islam does not depend on one person. Maybe that person is the founder, the preacher, the one who invites, the one who sacrifices. But that does not mean if that person dies, Islam is going to die. Islam continues its journey. من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه. There are the company of believers, they remained true to, to, to the promise they made to God. Some of them already died. Other groups are to follow. Islam does not die. Same thing happened with the death of the Prophet. Now the Prophet is really dead on the 28th of Safar, the 11th year of the Hijrah. Some people decided to change their course. انقلبتم على أعقابكم You turn back on your heels. So Fatima was very furious. So she sent some messengers to Abu Bakr that give me back my land. This is my land. This was a gift that I received from my father during his lifetime. He said, where are your witnesses? She said, the witness is Ali, my husband, and Um Ayman, the servant of the Prophet. And there was another male servant. He said, those witnesses do not work. Ali is your husband. Of course, Ali is going to testify on your behalf. Um Ayman is going to testify on your behalf. She said, but Ali, you don't hear what the Prophet said about Ali. Aqdaakum Ali, a'dalukum Ali. Ali is the most just. Ali is the most pious. So do you have doubt that Ali is going to give the wrong testimony? He said, that does not work for me. Bring me another type of evidence. Now, my friend, we have a maxim in Islam, and we all agree to this maxim. 
This is a jurisprudential maxim. The maxim says, states, The proof is upon the plaintiff and the hilf al yameen al yameen means when you make an oath it's upon the one who's defendant now the land was in the hand of fatima and automatically it should be for fatima the one who comes and says does not belong to fatima has to bring proof and evidence it's not Fatima who should, the one who should bring the evidence. Abu Bakr has to bring witnesses to say this is not for Fatima, not vice versa. So he still rejected the witnessing of Imam Ali and Um Ayman. And then after that, Fatima said, then, okay, no problem. If you think that the Prophet did not give me this land, which he really did give, give it to me, during his lifetime, he gave it to me. Now, consider it to be inheritance. This is my father's land. Do you believe that this was my father's land? He said, yes. This land did not belong to the Muslim community. It was the private property of the Prophet. She said, then I am the inheritor of the Prophet. I am his daughter. Now Abu Bakr says, I heard the Prophet saying, we the company of the Prophet's we do not bequeath anything of our wealth. Whatever we leave is public charity. She said, but this contradicts the Quran. Quran says, وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ Dawood." The Quran speaks about يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ that the prophets before they bequeathed to their children so how come a prophet muhammad does not bequeath this is number one number two if there is a hadith such a hadith like that and you heard the prophet how come i did not hear it i am with my father 24 7. how come imam ali did not hear it how come my father before his death did not say to me oh fatima you know what this land that I have, the land of Fadak, is not yours. This is for the Ummah. Why didn't my father say this to me before his death? How come you know and I don't know? And I'm with my father? Abu Bakr was convinced here that he should not take this land from Fatima. So under pressure, he wrote a book, Katab He wrote a book that this land belongs to Fatima and it has to go back to Fatima. Fatima took the book. While she was leaving, Omar comes and finds the book. He takes it, he reads it. History says he spat into the book and he rips it off. And then he goes inside and he chides Abu Bakr. Why are you weak? What happened to you? Why do you give this land back to Fatima? We need this land. We need to strip Ali and Bani Hashim from every wealth, from every economic power that they have. Because if they have this land and the revenue of this land, they could pose as danger for us. They are going to create problems for us. They should not get this land. This land has to go back to the treasury. We should control it. We should not allow Bani Hashim to control this land. In this case, Fatima had to take her case to the public, to the people inside the mosque. Not because of the peace of the land, my friends, but Fatima wanted to expose the political establishment. Fatima's goal was to shame the political establishment. According to Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazili, 
that if Abu Bakr and Umar would give the land of Fadak back to Fatima today, tomorrow she's going to come and say, give the Khilafah back to my husband Ali. So they decided to shut that door from the beginning. No land of Fadak and no Khilafah. And you Ali and Fatima, stay away from us. You are completely excluded from this game. And this is what Imam Ali alayhi salam says. Imam Ali says, we were not dying for Fadak. We know we're going to leave. We know we're going to die. We are not going to take Fadak with us to the grave. But, كانت في أيدينا Fadak. Fadak was under our control during the time of the Prophet. من كل ما أظلته السماء. From all what this sky covered, on this land, covered from the land, was only the piece of Fadak that the Prophet left for us. فشحت عليها نفوس قوم وسخت عنها نفوس قوم آخرين ونعم الحكم الله والزعيم محمد. Some people became greedy on this land. They hold tight to this land. Others become generous. They said, okay, if you want to take it, take it. Piece of land would not make me rich or poor. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented the entire heaven and earth to the Prophet and his family. Jibreel comes to the Prophet during his lifetime and he says, Ya Muhammad, our Lord greets you and he says, I can turn the mountains of this earth into gold and silver and you own it. It becomes your own property. And that would not reduce from your value. You would stay as the messenger of God. The Prophet asks, Ya Jibreel, and then after that, would I die or not? Jibreel says, yes, you die. There is no exception. The Prophet وسلم, answers, what shall I do with this gold and silver? If I am supposed to die and leave this life, this is Muhammad and this is his family. They are not going to fight over a piece of land. Piece of land, these are properties. There are some, some people who are en enchanted about them fascinated by them. They consider the piece of land as the biggest asset, not the Prophet and his family. But Fatima had to take her case. First, to allow the Muslims to know what happened, how the Khilafah was taken from its righteous and rightful source, and that is Ali ibn Abi Talib. And how second the, the land of Fadak, that the Quran stays in two chapters, Surah al rum and Surah Al-Hashr. And there are witnesses that the Prophet has passed this land of Fadak to his daughter Fatima, now is being appropriated by Abu Bakr, by the political establishment of that time, to deprive Ahlul Bayt from any economic source any economic power. This is the story of Fadak, my friends. Interestingly enough, that this land of Fadak was given back to the children of Ali and Fatima. After Fatima died, and Imam Ali died, and Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein, some caliphs came, such as Umar bin Abdul Aziz. He gave them the, the land back. He said, we should not hold to this land. This land is not ours. It's not the state's land. This land belongs to Fatima to Zahra. And you know how many times this happened back and forth, back and forth during the Umayyad time, during the Abbasid time, during other times, a caliph would come and he looks at the evidence. And then he gives this land back 
then another one succeeds him, he takes it away. But this land would remain the land of Fadak. Remember the name Fadak. It would remain in the history. It will go down in the history of mankind and the history of Islam as an evidence of how corrupt a regime could become to the extent that he's willing to take the land and the property of the daughter of the Prophet who speaks the truth where the Quran says يطهركم تطهيرا in one of his discussions and arguments with Abu Bakr Imam Ali comes he says Ya Abu Bakr let me ask you this question do you think Fatima is lying to you? he says no Fatima does not lie he says then why Fatima is asking for Fadak? he said I don't know he said okay let me ask you if someone comes to you, to you today and he says Fatima committed a crime, would you believe him? And would you put Fatima to punishment? Would you punish her? He said, yes, I do. He said, then, Ya Abu Bakr, God says in the Quran about Fatima, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا so you are not believing God who says Fatima is absolutely purified and cleansed from any material, from any spiritual abomination or sin. And then you believe one person against God. The Muslims who were sitting there with her, they were shocked at this argument. They said, Ya Abu Bakr, yes, what Ali ibn Abi Talib is telling you is right. God in the book says, this family, do not lie, do not cheat. They are honest. So when they say this land belongs to me, you have to give it back to them. You should not argue with them. How dare you argue with the daughter of the prophet? But my friends, remember, politics is politics. And politics corrupts. Power and authority and dominance corrupts. We ask God to keep us always safe and always secure. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.